All right, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Friday night. It is the Earth Master out here about 9.32 p.m. California time. December 13th, 2024 is the date. Uh, take a look here at the Earthquake 3D Globe. Last 24 hours of earthquake activity. Latest one shows a 2.5 here across the area of California. Looks like right around the... Uh, Southern end here of the Cascadia subduction zone. There's that latest 2.5. A little bit of uh, further movement over here around the Shingletown area as well with a 3.3 and a 2.9 coming in with the, uh, within a few minutes of each other. Just an overall pattern out here of elevated seismic activity here recently. Uh, take a look here at the latest trimmer count out here shows 68 epicenters of trimmer at the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. If you didn't get a chance to check out my uh, coverage here of the Cascadia subduction zone video earlier this morning, go check it out. It is up there on the channel. Uh, just a little bit of information here on uh, the Cascadia, the southern end here. Uh, according to uh, this wonderful article here, this is a lot of information here put into this website. It's called survivingcascadia.com. You have to check it out. There's so much uh, information here and a lot of statistics, a lot of math. You know, math, I'm not super good with math. So this is perfect right here. It takes all the hard work out. This is a lot of good information here, though. 93% uh, of the time, the Cascadia has not had to wait 324 years for the strain to break it. So here we are. You know, 324 years since our last big earthquake along the Cascadia. There's a, you know, a wealth of information here on this. And I'm not going to cover it again, but uh, if you want to, go check it out. Uh, here's the USGS scenario for a 9.0 earthquake. Um, let's see if it's going to show us the felt reports out here or not felt reports we haven't felt it yet right but uh, uh where did that go there should have been a little model on what it would uh feel like here but uh there it is there's a little image for you 9.0 that's if a full rupture takes place there that's along the entire length of the cascadia uh, if a partial rupture happens here it's going to be limited here to about a it could be up to an 8.7 or so uh, that's with a partial rupture across the uh, Northern California, Southern Oregon area. And that's where I think uh, uh, the likelihood of that about ready to, you know, it's about ready to take place here. We've been looking at uh, a lot of different events here recently across the area. Uh, elevated trimmer here in the last month or so. Uh, and that's really nothing new. There's, you know, trimmer comes and goes here across this area, but uh, it seems as though the recent trimmer activity has contributed to a strain of earthquakes just upstream here uh, and also in various other areas around the trimmer up obviously uh, above the trimmer level this is occurring down into the subduction zone but there's been a lot of strain out here and uh, I'm, I definitely think it's to the point of where we may be seeing something happen out here you know it can only handle so much right 324 years of built up strain and that's since the last big one. You know, I, I don't know if we're going to see a, a full rupture out here. Um, but, uh, you know, the likelihood out here across the southern end, is, I think, is much higher right now. So there's the activity continuing here today, according to the uh, USGS. 2.5 showing up there on the uh, graphs, Petrolia, and also the Dinsmore station out here. So... There's that 2.5. Looks like there was another earthquake there. Much smaller on the graph right here across the Petrolia station, but not showing up there on the USGS map. That's one thing I've noticed. The uh, very limited here in reporting anything above or uh, below the 2.0 threshold across that area. Uh, here's a movement. Fairly shallow. These are crustal quakes out here uh, across the northern Sierra Nevada mountains here uh, with that 2.9 and a 3.3. Uh, north of the Battle Creek Fault here. Over the last, oh, I wish I could go back the last two weeks here, but uh, we'll show the last month or so. Um, ever since, 
about that seven pointer here that when we had the seven pointer here a few weeks or a few days back uh notice a trail of activity leading off here in this fashion you can see it stretching there across uh the northern sacramento valley down here in this fashion kind of kind of towards the uh, reno area where we're seeing all that elevated earthquake activity right now and that's just an overall sign of of the strain that's been ooh lights just blinked here am i still on Oh yeah, we got some strong winds out here right now. We got a pretty big low pressure system coming in, so uh, hopefully the stream doesn't go down while I'm doing this update. But we've noticed that elevated seismic event out here, you know, and it's it's uh, very obvious. Uh, there's a lot going on out here across this area. The Blanco fracture zone, seen a, a handful of decent sized earthquakes out there. Uh, throughout the last 30 days elevating the seismic strain here across this area uh, quite a bit of uh, movement here across the Gorda ridges here over the last few months we checked that out in last night's update video but I'm not going to do it right now so still watching the southern end here of the Cascadia subduction zone even though the tremor count here was a little less um, today's count was 68 a little bit less than yesterday's uh, which was 287. That's still in the same area, though, across the southern end of the Cascadia. And that's definitely been a ramp it up out here in the last few weeks. Uh, movement up into the Oregon area. How would you pronounce that? Molala? Is that right? I guess that's right. Or Molale. Uh, kind of hard to pronounce that because I have a cold. I, can, I can't breathe out my nose right now. Somehow I picked up another cold. It seems like this is the winter of just getting sick continuously. Goodness. I, it's crazy. Uh, some movement up around Idaho and the uh, area around the Sawtooth Fault System. Let me get back here in Southern California. I didn't really check this out down here. See if we got anything of any major value going on tonight. Uh, look at the 2.5 map and above. 2.5 and above map. There's a 2.6 here in the Ridgecrest area, but that's about it. Most of the movement here, very small microquake activity out here in the area with uh, no major swarming, no unusual activity to note there across the southern portion of the state for now. Earthquake activity continuing out in Nevada with, uh, let's see what we got for total tally now. 317 earthquakes there following that 5.8 struck there a few days ago. Still continue to see some aftershock sequences there. Again, overall pattern of strain out here across the West Coast. Uh, the rest of the country out there, the New Madrid Seismic Zone, pretty quiet for now. Look at the last 24 hours of earthquake activity. One big earthquake here earlier, uh, late afternoon time period there, 6.4 into the Molina, Chile area. That's just outside of the Santiago, Chile region. About 68 miles here into the Peru Chile Trench. Pretty deep earthquake, fairly powerful as well, but this subduction zone is uh, much capable uh, of producing a stronger earthquake there. In fact, 9.5 earthquake struck, oh, just south there back in 1961 or, or 1960, excuse me. Let's take a look here at the last, oh, series of earthquakes out here. And I think we're coming up here for an eight-pointer. Could the Cascadia be the uh, the eight-pointer that we're looking for? Good chance. So there's uh, four. Wow, that's a lot of earthquakes. <laughs> Maybe I should have went with a little less than a 7.5. But that's a lot of earthquake activity here. Uh, there's the 9.5, the great Chilean earthquake, right? That's a, uh, let's see where that's at. Okay, so a little way south. Uh, from today's earthquake, that 6.4, that 9.5 strikes struck right there back in 1960. That was a big one. That's the biggest ever earthquake recorded in human history, at least in our recorded history. Uh, prior to that, let's see here. I want to show you guys when the last eight pointer struck out here. Now we have to go back to about 2021. That was actually the year of three eight-pointers. We had one in the Kerbedeck Trench, the Alaska Peninsula up here, 
And also the South Sandwich Trench down here striking with an 8.1. But that was it. Uh, since then, we've seen a number of sevens, but uh, we're missing an eight pointer. And I say that because, well, we're supposed to have an eight pointer every year, maybe if not every year, every other year. And here we are almost into 2025 with no eight pointer. So uh, it's coming. Uh, the question is where, you know, it's, it's very possible it could be the Cascadia. Down here across New Zealand, a handful of earthquakes there. Uh, nothing major going on. Looks like a 4.7 into the southern end of the Kerbinek Trench. There's some shallow activity there across the Vanuatu region. Japan area remains pretty quiet here. Not a whole lot of elevated activity in that region for now. Uh, so still kind of focusing here across the eastern Pacific uh, for some further movement. Uh, there's an earthquake way down south here into the South Sandwich Trench, a little 5.3. That's at the extreme southern end, it looks like. Here's the last 30 days of elevated earthquake activity there across that subduction zone, filling in here across the southern end a little bit uh, with that more recent 5.3. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet out there. Not a whole lot going on for now. Um, Yellowstone, let me double check here real quick. Sometimes I forget to check that uh, area. Pretty quiet. Looks like some wind events out there. Wind. I can't even say wind because my nose is completely plugged. Not good. It's completely annoying as well. Uh, yeah, just a little bit of wind out there, it looks like. Aside from that, really no earthquake activity to discuss out there. Maybe a couple of very small spikes there, but that's about it. All right, let's move on here while I can still talk. Uh, space weather activity fairly quiet across the board. Really not seeing anything elevated out here in terms of uh, the aurora forecast. Uh, very minimal here on the flare percentage possibilities. 5% for the X flare. Uh, let's go check out the... Uh, oh, the Space Weather Prediction Center folks here. Let's see where I'm at. I think I passed it here. Um, oh, there we go. There we go. All right, we'll go down and check this here. I just want to see what we have for the latest model run. Um, there was a number of CMEs recently uh, that had kicked off. Earth here in the green. Uh, looks like there's some plasma clouds headed in this direction. Really nothing big around the 17th here in about four days or so. But uh, looks like maybe a little bit of elevated plasma density up here from... Uh, looks like a small amount there of uh, plasma shot off from the sun. But aside from that, really nothing major going on there for the uh, aurora forecast. Uh, nothing major in terms of severe weather. And for uh, the GFS model run here this evening, still seeing uh, some earthquake or earthquake activity. Still seeing some uh, rain out here across the West Coast. Got quite a bit coming in actually here right now. Pretty windy. So I'm hoping the storm or the uh, stream will stay up. That will continue overnight and throughout the day tomorrow and Saturday. Yeah, it looks like we'll have another system here coming in. Early next week for the West Coast. A little bit of rain out there across the Ohio area. Some colder air back behind that low pressure. And aside from that, let's see what else we got as we put this into motion. Looks like a newer storm system here coming in to the West Coast around the 21st time period. That's uh, some, some good news. Got some uh, more precipitation coming this way. Looks like a bunch coming this way, so I'm okay with that. Big time storm system up there across the Great Lakes area. We'll cover that as we get a little bit closer to that time period. That's almost in 2025. Goodness. All right. I'm out of here, folks. I'm going to have fun trying to sleep tonight. You know, it's just, it's, it's not good. I might try a little hot shower, see what happens here, but it's, it's weird. I'm telling you, it's something that something's in the air. I don't know if it's in the food. You know, I don't go out a lot. So, you know, as far as my social interaction goes, so I don't know where I'm picking this up at. But uh, pretty crazy. 
I've had enough of being sick this year. All right, have a good one. We'll catch you guys back out here in the morning for the Saturday morning update. Stay safe out there, folks. And, of course, be prepared, okay? Uh, if you didn't get a chance to watch that, my update video this morning on this uh, Cascadia possibility, go check it out. Or if you want to read specifically yourself, uh, this article is called survivingcascadia.com. Well-written, super well-written article out here. I'm really surprised I haven't came, uh, come across this uh, before. I don't know exactly when it was written here, but uh, it uh, is definitely worth the while to read. So, All right, I'll catch you guys back out here in the morning. Stay safe.